So why isn't Facebook working? What doesn't work? Let's actually begin to break down what you've been told to do and why things don't work out. Fun fact, the reason that they're constantly figuring out the latest change in Facebook have to do so because they didn't figure out how to make it work in the first place. If you're spending more than an hour a week on Facebook and you're not scaling confidently and you're not confident in what you're doing and you're not able to spend the rest of your time with your family or on the rest of your business, you're working in your business instead of on it, this is perfect for you. I'm excited, clearly, let's go. All right, so today's video is gonna be great. What we're gonna talk about is what doesn't work. And clearly this is we're gonna hack Facebook. That's stupid. So maybe this sounds like you. I'm gonna try that brand new hack that I saw somewhere on the internet, hoping to replicate some screenshot someone posted without any context that might not even be legit. And then I'm gonna see a couple exciting days and then I'm gonna struggle as it starts to get worse and worse. And then another week, another month, another year goes by and you're still wasting money and not growing. You've hired yet another agency that has promised the same thing and it's not working out. The promises of somebody delivering you short-term wins isn't panning out to be long-term success. Because, oh, by the way, most of the people that teach you how to do this stuff or most of the agencies that are doing this stuff, let's back up a second. What is the motivation of an ad agency? What's their business? Their business is to not get fired in the first 90 days. You ever notice there's an onboarding team and then a persistent team after that? That team after that isn't there to keep you in business. That team, their job is to learn how to eventually be good enough to be an onboarding team. Because as soon as they get you to sign that contract for the next 90 days, they're off to making sure that the next person doesn't leave in the next 90 days. What that means is they have to show a lot of action for a lot of promise really quick. And if you ask any agency owner that's honest, they'll say their motivation is not to grow the brand. Their motivation is to not get fired. And there's a very big difference if you're an outside contractor trying to not get fired versus an internal employee or owner trying to make more money. So today what we're gonna break down is the things that don't work beyond not getting fired in 90 days. Let's focus on everything that they've told you to do that doesn't work. And also maybe a couple of things to do to fix it. All right, now usually this is the part in the time of the video where I'll show you to like and subscribe stuff, but instead, I mean, hey, sure, go ahead and do that, but. Check this out. Right there's a QR code for Facebook Ads MBA program. If you want to know my standard operating procedures, what I've trained ad agencies and brands and marketers to do to develop seven, eight, nine figure businesses, re massively reduce the time spent in the platform, massively increase the bottom line volume of profit. Again, we're talking about profit volume, actual money we take home, not ROAS, not like cost cap margin contribution and MER and all that other nonsense. No, 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 real money in the bank account while also giving you more time, that's it. There's literally, if you were to hire me to take over your ad account, this is what I would do. First 12 weeks in order so that you don't need me. Check it out. All right, let's take a little break and get back to it. All right, so let's get real. Hacks don't work because they aren't built to drive long-term success. So today we're gonna break down nine Facebook hacks and completely just eliminate any doubt you had. And should I or should I not run these? You're gonna know 100%, this ain't for you. That's what this is all about, driving more confident, right? So let's break these all down, I'm super excited. Now these are super popular ideas, but if they worked, you wouldn't be here right now. So let's address some of the most common worst practices. By the way, here's the list of things we're gonna go with today. Yeah, some of that's gonna hurt right in the feelings. Let's break it down. All right, number one, traffic campaigns. Now this one probably should go without saying, but traffic campaigns are never a good idea. Now, traffic campaigns come from the idea that, well, I know that 3% of people that land on my page buy, so if I can get a click 
for $3, then I know I'm gonna make a sale for roughly $100, and if I can get a click for less than that, then I'm gonna make money. So let me just get as many clicks as I can. The problem is, this isn't created equal. Not all clicks are the same thing. And this thinking comes from platforms that are not meritocracy intent-based platforms. They don't come from OCPM platforms. Instead, they come from CPC platforms. So native and uh, search and other things where you are playing a volume game based around a set inventory. Now, in that case, the unit economics are completely different. So in native advertising, where you're just buying like CNN.com or uh, you know TMZ or ESPN or whatever, you're just buying banner ads. You know that audience and you roughly know what a click from that audience is worth and you're just trying to spam it to grow the front end of the business. In search, you know what a click is worth because somebody already knows who you are. They already have some level of intent. Facebook is a different thing. Facebook is about creating intent, amplifying the business, letting people who are already problem and market aware knowing that you exist. Remember, you don't have to handle the whole funnel inside of Facebook ads. You just have to amplify the way your business makes money. And you might say, well, yeah, as long as I get a click, I'm gonna convert. That's because right now your baseline on clicks isn't from the type of traffic that Facebook brings. And the more bad traffic you bring, the worse those numbers are going to be. When you run traffic campaigns, you are not optimizing for people that are interested in buying. And you're also going to destroy the conversion rate of your web page and be like, sure, well, but it's still gonna work out because the cost per click, I, as long as I know my click is worth, your click is gonna be worth a lot less. And more importantly, all the optimizations you're making to your landing page get thrown out the window because now you're polluting it with a huge volume of terrible traffic. So if you're running traffic campaigns, understanding that what you're doing is investing heavily and making sure that everything that happens after the click works a lot less, and you're doing so in a way that doesn't bring you net new buyers. That's terrible for business. So if you're running e-commerce or lead gen or SaaS, if you're trying to make money with your Facebook ads, because remember, not everybody's trying to do that. Running a traffic campaign is one of the worst things you can do. All right, retargeting campaigns. Now, retargeting campaigns is super popular and everybody say, well, the ROAS is so much better. And to be fair, there are use cases for retargeting campaigns. If you're using catalog ads, great. If you're using rebuttal upsells, great. But if you're running retargeting campaigns with retargeting audiences to sell people to the same thing or even discounting it, you're destroying your business. There are three reasons for this. First, you're paying money to reach people who are already aware of you. So your incremental lift of your money on the rest of the business tanks. Remember, Facebook is there to amplify your business model. If you're spending money to reach people that have already told you no, because to be fair, most people in retargeting guys have already made the decision to not buy from you. Instead of bringing in new people into the funnel for search and for email and for everything else to work, Instead, you're trying to make the amplification device more effective. You're trying to make your least efficient marketing channel better at the expense of all of the other more efficient channels. That doesn't make sense. Number two, the results aren't incremental. Now I know I just said incremental up to other channels, but also the further down in the funnel somebody is, the more likely that sale's also going to be attributed to other channels. So that ROAS looks phenomenal because that person also opened an email and maybe searched this week. Now maybe you get additional revenue, but it's not all 100% net new. So for instance, if somebody sees your ad, goes to your landing page, signs up for an email, searches for you, sees a retargeting ad, and then opens another email and then buys, well, Google and email and Facebook are all gonna get credit for that sale. And that sale might be a 3X ROAS on Facebook, but it's actually only a one because that revenue isn't additional to the other platforms. Unless you're gonna say, well, any revenue I get from any platform that's not Facebook isn't real. Then, okay, we're sitting in a spot we, where it worked. But going back to point number one, you're doing that on a smaller and smaller group of people. So you're making less profit margin on a smaller number of people in a way that starves the growth of your business. Again, a very bad idea. And point number three, maybe you're running discounts. If you think the idea of saying to people who have already shown you they're not interested, or folks that are already interested and likely to buy on another, path, on another channel, 
If the way to make them effective is to get less money from them by offering them a discount, you're paying more money because you added spend on the retargeting audience to get less money because you're offering them a discount. In what world is paying more money to make less profit in a way that again, shrinks the incremental lift of the business, point one, and makes your reporting false and steals the incrementality of additional sales, point number two, just to make less money on that person to begin with, point number three. There's no world where that makes any sense. That's terrible for business. All right.